tell you, these have been, for me, two of the best. Oops, there it is. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are indeed good. You are the author of good. You are the definition of good. You are good. Transform us, O Lord, so we can make a difference this day and the days to come. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Good morning, folks. Good morning. We are in Romans 11, and uh, we left off, I guess, to verse 12 yesterday. Uh, we want to pick it up at 13, but 13, I think for those who might be listening for the first time or forget what we, <laughs> forget some of what we covered uh, yesterday, uh, this is basically Paul talking about, talking to the Gentiles in Rome uh, about uh, what is becoming of Israel. Uh, because of uh, Jesus' ministry. Uh, and um, just to, to uh, get a rolling start on this, let me read verse 11 again, and then we'll jump to 13. And the question is, did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Okay, did Jesus' ministry cause this? Of course not. Okay? Then at 13, I'm saying all this, especially for you Gentiles, God has appointed me as an apostle to the Gentiles. I stress this, for I want somehow to make the people of Israel jealous of what you Gentiles now have, so I might save some of them. For since their rejection meant that God offered salvation to the rest of the world, their acceptance will be even more wonderful. Talking about the Jews there, right? What do you mean for version? This is in LT. Okay. I'm down to uh, verse uh, 14. Yeah, you, uh, you, uh, you, that, you that was 15. 15. Halfway through 15. Yeah. Okay. You didn't move. You got it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so, it will be life for those who were dead. That's the way uh, Paul is looking at the Gentile, the, the Jews that had first rejected Jesus. Yes. Made jealous by the blessings that the Gentiles have received, and when they come back to them, they will come back to the life again. That's, that goes right to the Isaiah prophecy, uh, the dead bones rising and, and so forth, yeah. um, and the nation of Israel becoming reborn. It's all ties together. It's great. So um, their acceptance, the point he's making here is uh, the Jews' acceptance will be even more wonderful once they're, gra once they're grafted back in. It will be life for those who were dead. Verse 16. And since Abraham and the other patriarchs were holy, their descendants will also be holy. That's a big step. Just as the entire batch of those is holy because the portion given at, as an offering is holy. For the roots of the tree are holy. If the roots are holy, the branches will be too. What a... What an incredible visual that is, that um, this whole, Paul gives numbers of visuals, including Jesus does too. This is, a, this is an olive tree, and an olive tree can be hundreds of years old, and big fat tree, or little tree, and then what they would do is, say, okay, that branch is dead, and you wonder, how can a branch get dead when it's attached to a live root? Well, branches get dead. Yeah. So you, you can, can hack it. off the branch, yeah. and then you put a, uh, a V in the, um, in the tree, and you can graft mm -hmm. a, a, a new uh, live shoot into that old, yeah. and the, the uh, God ordained the tree enough to recognize the graft and say, okay, I'm going to reconnect to you. Zoop! Like the, so the thing gets watered, it grows, and it grows off the old root system, which is uh, it, it's still mind-boggling to me. And one of the commentators said this morning that with the same root system, you can, you can graft in all kinds of different olives into the like 
wow, okay, well, it's because it's the same flow that enlivens the new graft and the new graft and the new graft and the new graft. So it's being fed by the same root system. That's right. If you look here, what it's saying, I mean, this is what Paul has been saying and us right along. I mean, it's what, it's what it's being fed. Yes. How it's being fed, you know, through everything that the graft is being fed. I mean, we know now about skin grafts and about how you can graft anybody in, um, they clone stuff and they, they grow trees out of good trees. You're not going to graft or, or um, clone off a bad tree. You right. want to go into something and you want to feed, the, the roots are feeding that good, that good soil for the good oil. Mayhem. Uh, good food. So, my, my great grandfather once grafted together four different species of pear into the same tree. Wow. He had sickle pears, Bosch pears, Bartlett pears, and some fourth variety I can't even think of. That was the craziest looking tree, but boy, yeah. when it became fruit, it was really wonderful to have this instant variety of pears up here. And that, you know, the, the, the visual that Paul is, is uh, addressing here yeah. is just that. It's the, uh, the idea of the richness of the body. If we get back to uh, the uh, having the people, the original Jews who got the you know yeah. the original um, designation from God mm -hmm. uh, to, to come back in, what richness they add to the whole uh, body. This is just a slam against anybody mm -hmm. that's thinking replacement theology. This that's is right. uh, that exactly what he's trying to do here. So, even though there were city folks in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, they all understood the, the farming part of their culture. They all understood it was not like, you know, in, in some of our cities today, some of our children haven't seen grass. Like, what? What is that? They haven't seen, but this is not, this is an agrarian culture in 2,000 years ago. This is a culture that understands farming and shepherding and, now, they may be a storekeeper and selling bread or whatever, but they still, whatever they did, they had this walking, working knowledge of the farming part of their world. And in fact, if you look at Israel today, they're incredibly fruitful in their oh. farming techniques. Um, oh. but, but some of the people in Jerusalem today may not be as insightful into the grafting process as 2,000 years ago, but what they don't know, they can ask a friend, hey, how do you do this? And, um, yeah. We realized the wasteland that Israel was when Mark Twain was there in the <coughs> 1800s. He said the place is just, it's amazing how desolate. You couldn't believe how torn up uh, Jerusalem was. And uh, I mean, described the lake, the Sea of Galilee as a, a mosquito swamp. Yeah. And it was, just, it was just desolate. You go there today. When I was there several years ago, the uh, nation was, population was about 7 million. They had already planted over 400 million trees in what is essentially a desert environment. Yeah. Incredible. I mean, that's, this is, you know, the city, and the, the other thing, miraculous, there were actually oases popping up spontaneously in the Negev desert. Yes. That's about equivalent to, you know, I... Hi. Can I just see if we need to move Hi. the car? I'm sorry, we need to move the car. You need to move the car? Yeah. Do you need your key? Yeah. Hang on. Uh, yeah, that's about the equivalent of okay. So, well, someone was popping up in the um, in the uh, uh, what do we have? Death Valley, right? Yeah. yeah. Imagine the oasis popping up. That's what's happening over there. Yeah. So, maybe... so anyway, it, it's astonishing. It, so, it's a visual that is just so well known that nobody needed yeah. an explanation. I mean. If you were a four-year-old on a farm 
you're learning about grafting already. Yeah. It's not, this is not the advanced class. This isn't, you got a uh, degree from UMass Amherst on there. No, this is, this is just so common that they would just shake their head if somebody didn't understand the process. Like, what are you, where are you from? This is how grafting works. Of course, this is how grafting works. See this, see this olive tree? It's been, been in our family for generations. And you think, okay. Yeah. So, so, and for them to, to look at the, uh, at the dead wood, so to speak, pile up the dead wood and use it for firewood, was just like, of course that's what you do with it. You're not gonna leave dead branches on this olive tree. It makes it richer. Right. When you, if, with any gardening, you know that if you cut the, um, the dead out of it, it's gonna enrich the living. It's That's gonna right. make the fruit sweeter, mm -hmm. bigger, and better. That's right. Um, Good morning, Joanne, welcome with us. Sometimes with a, a garden <coughs> that you have, you have to mow the whole thing down and start over again. And the good will grow out of that land and you you end up cutting all the dead out of it. That's right. Um, you knowing gardens, that's what you do. I mean, it makes it better each year. The 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 same land will grow a better product. Grafting, thing, gra I'm sorry, grafting and cloning. Each generation of that fruit gets better. It gets stronger and sweeter. Like like he was saying, you know how how um, that fruit from that tree that his grandfather. Grafted was unbelievable. That's right. Yeah. 17. Verse 17. Uh, talking about graft, grafting here. But some of these branches from Abraham's tree, right? Some of the people of Israel have been broken off. And you Gentiles who were branches from a wild olive tree mm. have been grafted in. So now you also receive the blessing of God uh, that God promised to Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. What a, what a wonderful visual that, that uh, verse is. What a way is. to put it. Yeah. You know, he couldn't have put it any better. Yeah. yeah. But, verse 18. 18. Yeah, on the 18. Uh, this is Romans 11, 18 and LT. But you must not brag about being grafted in to replace the branches that were broken off. You're just a branch, not a root, <laughs> not uh, the root. <laughs> yeah. 19? Verse 19, yeah. Well, you may say, those branches were broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you are there because you do believe. So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches... He won't spare you either. Amen. Wow. Huh? So there's a sense there, yeah, there's a sense that losing faith, losing faith loses your position in the tree. That's right. It's not automatic. Yeah. 22. 22. Notice how God is both kind and severe. He's severe toward those who disobey, but kind to you if you continue to trust in his kindness. But if you stop trusting... You also will be cut off. Wow. And the people. What an incredibly strong verse. Yeah. Very strong. It's hey, so don't think of yourself cocky because you got chosen to replace the broken <coughs> branches. Oh, I'm so special because I, I'm, well, don't get cocky because yeah. if you stop believing, you'll become dead wood also. That, mm -hmm. that sounds more... That actually is less blunt than how that scripture is reading. But if you are cocky about this and stop living in the life, in the loving flow of Christ, you'll dead wood. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll be chopped off so somebody else can be chopped in. Um, Verse 23. Yes. And if the people of Israel turn, turn from their unbelief, the people of Israel turn back from their unbelief, they will be grafted in again, for God is 
it has the power to graft them back into the tree. You, by nature, were a branch cut from a wild olive tree. So if God was willing to do something contrary to nature by grafting you into his cultivated tree, he would be far more eager to graft the original branches back into the tree where they belong. Wow. So is this disrespecting the Jews? Absolutely not. Is this disrespecting the Gentiles? Absolutely not. This is, we know where our roots are. Our roots are from uh, Abraham and Isaac and David and Moses and Isaiah and Jeremiah. (coughs) Christian roots are in Jewish culture. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're drafted into Jewish uh, olive tree, so to speak, does doesn't negate how glorious this is for us or negate how glorious it is when the Jews will get drafted grafted back in how how mind boggling and how uh theologically this must really rock some people who have a a uh, warped view of who Jews are and what the Jewish nation is yeah we see it today a lot, you know, all the, <laughs> these protests, I'm like, they're, it's insane. They don't even know what they right. are, are protesting. That's right. You know? Lord, yeah. we thank you that you have grafted us in, that you have lovingly taken us as wild roots, as wild branches, and grafted us into the true vine. Thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Let us, let us go about doing good this day. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord God. Help us to live out what you have for us and to walk in what you would have us to do. I ask, Lord God, that you take over my mouth, my ears, guard them. Help my hands and my feet to go where you would send me and to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you again, Lord, for your instruction here, the powerful perspective that's that's laid out here before us, that we might have an understanding of our spiritual heritage in uh, the Jewish religion, that uh, they are the source into which you poured so much of your word uh, and understanding of you and so forth, that we now may be the happy recipient so help us to appreciate that that we might regard uh, the Israelites that that have so um, painstakingly preserved the word and uh, carried it forth for our benefit that we may be uh, so enriched and uh, let our enrichment become an appeal to them to join back to you in faith through Christ. Uh, We pray this in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Amen. Blessings. Blessed day all. And to you.